okay, let's take a look at how to decide the order of integration. We've, we've seen a video on dy dx with the vertical slice moved horizontally. We've also seen a video on dx dy with the horizontal slice moved vertically. And now we're gonna look at different questions to try to figure out, should it be done as dx dy or should it be done as dy dx? Okay, first up, we're gonna have the order of integration dictated to us by the integrand, the, the, the function that's on the inside. Here's an example. The inside function is e to the minus y squared. And we're gonna figure out what the region is. But the, the main point though is that uh, you can't integrate it. e to the minus y squared is lacking something that could help you be able to execute this integral in a closed form. You can't find the antiderivative of e to the minus y squared with respect to y. What you would need is uh, a friend. Um, you would need a y as a multiplier because then you could do a u sub. If you had a y as a multiplier, you can let u then be the entire exponent and then du can then be minus 2y dy, and you could then solve for y dy by dividing by a negative 2. But we don't have that there. There's no y here. Okay, it's not there. Erase. Gone. You can't integrate y first, and it's because of the integrand. Can't find a closed form for that antiderivative. Now, the integral is set up as y first. From the, I want to talk for a second about being able to interpret what the region is. Like no one said the region is bounded between this curve and this. All you have is the double integral. So here's how you can go about figuring out what the region is. The region doesn't dictate to us that we should do it as dx dy first. It's the integrand. This this must be done as dx dy if we're going to do it at all. Okay, dx dy, and so. Uh, what is the region? You see, your y bounds are y equals x and y equals 2. All right. And so that's going to be then, uh, these, these are lines. These are nice lines that you can go and graph, right? y equals x and y equals two. So we have our x and y axis. Here is the y equals x. And then here is the y equals two. Now, we, um, we are, they, they have it set up as a dy dx. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna switch it. But I just want you to know what the region looks like though. Um, and so, uh, a dy dx is a vertical slice who gets moved horizontally. And these circles here are on your upper limit inside and your lower limit inside. And that works out for us that um, this is our region. Always double check and make sure. And then uh, start at zero and you'll be done by the time you get to x equals two. So this is dy dx, which is not going to work. And it'll be our job then to switch. Switch the limits. Okay, we got our dy dx, lower limit inside, upper limit inside. And then we move from left to right from zero to two. Not going to work. So we have to switch to dx dy. And so that's a horizontal slice who gets moved upward. dx dy. Put the circles at the end of your slice because they will dictate to you who your upper limit inside is and your lower limit inside is. Now we're doing it dx dy, so the functions have to have equation x equals and x equals. This left one here, the lower limit inside, that, that's the y-axis, that's called x equals zero. And then this line on the, on the right side, that's the line y equals x, we just have to call it x equals y. And then this thing gets moved vertically upward from zero to two. So we have it. We've switched the bounds because the integrand dictated to us that we must. We can't integrate y first. 
No way to find the antiderivative of our integrand with respect to y. Well, watch what happens if we integrate with respect to x first. So now we change it to be dx dy, same integrand, and now my bounds are lower bound inside a zero, upper bound inside a y, moved vertically upward from a lower bound zero to an upper bound of two. Now the integrand, who is in terms of y, gets treated like a constant. There are no x's in there. It's the same as integrating your favorite number, whatever that might be. Integrate four. The antiderivative with respect to x, 4x. The antiderivative of e to the minus y squared with respect to x, e to the minus y squared times x. Now watch what happens. The thing that banned you from being able to do this before now will, will occur. You put the upper limit x equals y in, if you need to remember to put x equals, x equals to remind yourself, x equals, you are replacing x with y, you are replacing x with zero. And so now you have a calc one integral. The y is there now, your friend has arrived. So now you can do a u sub. Lower limit gives you zero. Okay. All right, great. What's the u sub? We did it already. Uh, here, u is minus y squared. So du is minus 2y dy divided by negative 2. The replacement to y dy is negative 1 half of du. The new integral becomes negative 1 half e to the u du. Antiderivative is e to the u with the negative 1 half multiplier. Go back into what u was. u was negative y squared. So we have negative 1 half e to the negative y squared as our antiderivative. And we're gonna plug a two in and plug a zero in and we're all done with this question. Change the bounds. I mean, uh, change the order of integration because the integrand dictated it to you. Put a two in, you get e to the negative four. Put a zero in, you get e to the zero, who's a one. Keep the negative one half outside. There, you did it. Okay, I have other examples. I have an example where the where the region's gonna dictate to you, and then I have an example where both of them, but let's save those for another video. Let's go ahead and end this video now, and um, 